Hey there, YouTube. Section th 333 here. Um, having a little smoke in my backyard. In my back coop. Got a little box opening. Yeah. Actually, it's not really an opening. I opened the box already. Um, and I'm already digging into the treats, so to speak. Uh, I am smoking my... Which pipe is this? It's 2017 St. Patrick's Day pipe. And... This is the XL02 uh, shape. Uh, so it's a larger bowl. Um, in case anyone was curious, this is real silver because it was tarnished when I took it out of the box today. I haven't shown this pipe much love. Not that I don't love it. I do love it. Um, just just been smoking the ones from the standard rotation. Um, now, what am I smoking in it? I'm smoking something that I just picked up. This is a uh, Kamoys of London, cask number one. And, uh, this is a English blend. It is supposed to be like a quintessential English blend. Let me take off the shades and put on the actual eyes. Put on the functional eyes, so to speak. And uh, so, this is made by the Scandinavian Tobacco Group, and it's the quintessential English blend loaded with Latakia, which uh, combines brilliantly with Virginia's and Oriental for that distinctive British experience. A rich variety of flavors complete the experience. Um, I don't know if there's burley in this or any type of Cavendish whatsoever, but I suspect... This is made by the Scandinavian Tobacco Group, and I gotta tell you, this looks and feels and smells very similar to Dunhill's My Mixture 965. Could very well be Dunhill's my, my mixture 965, or a very close variant of it. But you get all of that. Um, comes in a very cool tin. It's a three ounce tin. Um, comes with a foil wrapping over here, and then you cut the foil back or peel the foil back, however you choose to get it. Off. And the tin is quite resealable. Um, it is perfect as far as uh, moisture and dryness content goes. Um, it is absolutely perfect, but with the tin note here, you're getting you're getting that dried fruit, raisins, um, figs, you're getting all of that that you would get from uh, my mixture 965. Straighten out my hat. Um, it is just as I'm here in Long Island, New York. We are getting a snowstorm tonight into tomorrow. Um, and if any of you are wondering, it is very cold here. And taste-wise, taste-wise, I find this closer to Dunhill Standard Mixture. Although, I, I tell you, this is very similar to my mixture, 965. No, it has the occasional sourness that I get from uh, from the standard mixture. Wow. 
So I know Dunhill's, you know, they're not going to be making Dunhill any longer. You may want to look into this. So I got two tins of that in this uh, box. Because I'm trying to look to things. Um, you know, Bradley was from Stuff and Things was commenting that. Hold on while I get a little coffee here. Bradley from Stuff and Things was commenting that he was trying to look for blends to replace his favorite Elizabethan mixture, which is what's his favorite vapor. So. I'm a Latakia file, and one of my favorites was my mixture 965. Um, I love Dunhill Standard, and I love uh, a lot of the Dunhill blends. So, in the same respect, I was looking to uh, replace those as well. Um, London mixture is actually my favorite, of the, and then of course Durbar. Um, I have a lot of Durbar on hand, so I think I'm going to be okay with Durbar for the next few years at least. Um, and I'm sure I'll tin some and I'll smoke other things in between um, but there's other blends that were going to be affected possibly by the deeming regulations um, which are on hold till 2019 right now I don't know if that's because of the current administration I don't know if Donald Trump had anything to do with it I doubt he did it's probably not on a president's docket but if he did, kudos. Yeah. Um, but the current administration put the deeming regulations on hold. So I ordered a few other things too. Um, this is uh, McClellan Tobacco Company mixture number eight. It's uh, Virginia's and Orientals. Uh, it's an extremely refined medium mixture. It's soft, round, flavored due to the fully rubbed, matured red cake tobaccos forming its base. Lightly sweet, smooth, and rich, and truly mellow smoke. Um, I do like Virginias from time to time, too, particularly in the summer. Uh, so I wanted to check this out. Um, but I heard the Orientals in here. I, I love Orientals. So I heard those are fantastic in this particular blend. So I said, let's try them out. By the way, I have the flu. Yes, I'm outside in the cold, and I have the flu. Um, and the reason for that is purely because of uh, the flu is a virus. Being in the cold does not affect a virus. Bacteria and viruses get cold, not, not being in the cold. Um, <laughs> so I got two tins of the Kamois. I got one tin of, the, uh, of this because I think that's all that was available. Let's see if they get another one. This all came from smoking pipes. So I got uh, Captain Earl's Private Stock. I picked up two tins of this. This is a blend of eight select tobaccos highlighted by Rich Latakia and Deep Red Virginia, stoved and pressed into a crumble cake. Private Stock is perfect all day smoke for connoisseurs of rich and complex English blends. Looking forward to that. So yeah, two tins of that. I got two tins of this as well. This is uh, Captain Earl's uh, Mystic Blend. Now, Captain Earl's is put out by Cornell and Deal. Um, and now, this one's a little harder to read because, uh, but actually, it's better in the daylight here. Sailors and land lovers alike will appreciate the complexity of Mystic Blend. Nine separate tobaccos are blended in harmony, so perfect only a true Mystic's touch could have concocted this medium bodied English masterpiece. So, that implies um, that there is Latakia involved. Latakia. Ah, picked up a couple of these too. Now, I didn't get this last year. Um, yeah, last year I did not get this particular blend. And uh, my dog is walking on the pool cover, which can support her, but, you know, because she's a 15 pound dog. It can actually support my weight for short periods of time. But I'm a little nervous. I've been getting a lot of rain, so pool's been filling up again. Um, now I'm nervous because it's going to snow. Um, so, crafted by Master Blenders, St. Patrick's Day 2018. I didn't get this last year because it was not available um, from any of the people that I purchased from. So, 
I guess this is made by the Scandinavian Tobacco Group too. So looking forward to this. Um, let's see. Ah. Possibly to be completely out of stock. Th these were the whole reasons I went online. <laughs> I, um, I follow GLPs on Instagram and I uh, went to his website as well. I follow his website pretty regularly. So one of the things I found was that the old London series is actually in jeopardy. They all came out after 2007. So the entire old London series is in jeopardy of not being available after the deeming regulations come into play. Um, and some of the best tobaccos you will ever have are in the old London series. <laughs> if you like Latakias, Virginias, things like that. I mean, literally some of the best stuff you're ever gonna have um, are in the GLP's old London series, which is pumped out by Cornell and Deal. Um, so I got a big tent of Meridian. <laughs> Uh, eight ounces, 227 grams. So I got a big tin of Meridian. And I already have tins of this too, and, and cellar. I got a large tin of GLP's Gaslight as well, another eight ounce uh, tin, 227 grams. And uh, let's see, another 50 gram tin of the uh, St. Patrick's Day blend. So basically, what I think I got two tins of everything that I'm showing you, except for the um, Orientals, uh, the Virginia Oriental blend, which, and this one here, I got three tins of uh, GLP's Quiet Nights. This might very well be my, one of my all-time favorite tobaccos. This is right here with Dunhill Durbar for me. Um, uh, I actually like this now that I've had Penzance. Um, I actually like this more than Penzance, <laughs> and I know that's sacrilege to say, but I really, really like this tobacco. It is, um, perfect. Um, so I got three tins of that, that they did not have available in the eight ounce, uh, tin. If they had, I would have just gotten two eight ounce tins. Um, and I bought all they had. <laughs> I think this was all that, the, that they had at the time. Um, so they said they're getting more in, so I will order more of that once I can. Um, I'll be stocking up on that. Um, I think I have plenty of Margate for the time being. Um, I have like several eight ounce bags of Margate. I have plenty of in so to bed. And, uh,. Excuse me. Um, and uh, this Camoys of uh, London. I think this, I'm, I might stock up on this as well, actually, um, as, a, as a backup <laughs> when I run out of all the other stuff. Um, although my wife is, you know, she wants. Um, wants me to comment about all the pipes that I have. Still wearing the same sunglasses, now I just like them. But uh, she made a comment about all the pipes I have. Um, and now recently she has made a comment about all the tobacco that I have. And I explained to her the cellaring process I equated it to um, the wine and uh, other items. She actually accused me of being a hoarder. I guess that's what you are doing when you sell her things and stock up. But it's all organized and it looks neat. It's completely categorized um, she accused me of being a prepper which 
I don't think I am, you know. I think she went a little overboard with that one. That's all right. And I said, you know, I don't think preppers would stock tobacco. <laughs> Whereas I did. <laughs> And, God forbid, there is some kind of apocalypse or something like that. People are going to want to smoke. I could use tobacco as currency. Booze, too. Mm. They're going to want to drink. They don't want to smoke. They want to forget they're having a bad time. All right? Besides, um, I do gift a lot of tobacco as well um, to friends. I mean, I do keep a very well stock seller. I cannot complain, but I do gift a lot when people ask me for a particular blends that I know they may not be able to get hold of, or if they have a blend I can't get hold of, and they and I have something they like, I'll I'll trade. You know, <laughs> I'm not above that. Um, but yeah, I was just hauling in some more, and I'll probably pick up more quiet nights. Um, once I said, like I said, once once I can get more of that in larger tents. Um, I gotta tell you, this pipe smokes extremely well. A little gurgly, but it's only like the second or third time I've smoked it. I think it's a second, really. Need to break it in probably a little better. I mean, it did have a pre-carbonized bowl, but... I will be darned if this is not... Um, by the way, I have no respiratory symptoms to my flu. That's why I smoke. Um, and I'm on Tamiflu. But I will be darned if this Kamoise is not the same blend as my mixture 965 or very close to it in, in a lot of proportions. Um, I do believe there's, I want to say English Cavendish, which is some kind of toasted burley. I would love to find a replacement for Durbar. Um, that that will be my ultimate goal. Short of buying all the Durbar that exist. Although, I gotta tell you, Margate is fantastic. Um, and I have a lot of that. And, uh... I have those two tins of Penzance, and I think there's a third on the way. A friend of mine saw one of my videos, and he said, oh, I see that tin in my smoke shop all the time in Ohio. So he uh, said, so I bought one for you, and I'm sending it to you. So um, he doesn't smoke pipes. Um, he only smokes his cigars. And he wanted to know if it was really that good. I said, try it. You know, he says, no, nah, I don't even own a pipe. So I said, I'll send you a pipe. He says, nah, it's too much time. Um, yes, sitting down and smoking a pipe is almost a mandate that you were going to sit down and enjoy and smoke your pipe. Um, I cannot rush when I'm smoking my pipe slows me down it relaxes me it um, makes me think of the men in my family who smoked the pipe before me not necessarily this pipe but it makes me think of several of my uncles and my father and my grandfather um, and uh,
But, uh, I like to sit down and read and smoke my pipe. It uh, has so many other meanings for so many people that, um, you know, it's not something I can rush through where you just snip and light up your cigar or, uh, there's also something, how would you say, rustic and transcendental, yes, transcendental about smoking a pipe and I'll tell you how I feel it's transcendental um, when people smoke tobaccos initially um, they did not roll cigars um, cigars and cigarettes were hand rolled and handmade and therefore if you were going to get something that was handmade I'm going to venture that it was expensive to do um, whereas the guy working out in the fields could whittle a pipe um, and yes, there were expensive pipes, there were cheaper pipes, there were corncob pipes, meerschaum pipes, but people could craft their own pipes. So, it transcended many cultures, smoked the pipes, many cultures, um, many socio-economic backgrounds smoked the pipe. Uh, and it was kind of a connective thing in, in many ways. And it, I look at how it transcends all the cultures today in the YouTube pipe community. Um, heck, we can solve all the world's problems in a couple of weeks. <laughs> you know, we, we're very inclusive. <laughs> you know, um, and it's funny because there, there are communities that attack one another. You know, the prepper community is very very on guard, so to speak, whereas the pipe community, we're all about our little pipe chats, you know, I mean, it's Saturday, I'm not smoking my Friday Savinelli, uh, I didn't have time for that yesterday, I was back and forth to doctor's offices with this flu bug, but, um, you know, I give Matches 860 all of that credit, man, he started that Friday Savinelli thing, and we ran with it. And, uh, and I'm thankful for him for doing it. <laughs> and, uh, y you know, it's just how it is. Um, you know, I'm thankful for all the guys who put out videos initially. And, uh, you know. Like I said, I think just, you know, you, the pipe is just something that uh, not just brings people together, but it, uh, it brings them to the same place. I guess that's bringing them together. <laughs> so, listen, um, I hope everybody has a good weekend. Um, International Pipe Smoking Day is the 20th of February. Uh, so that is, today is the Saturday before that, so that's just a couple days away, guys. Um, it's just four days away, you know. Enjoy yourselves, all right? Um, and I uh, hope everybody gets to smoke a little tobacco on that day, all right? And uh, if you can't, we'll smoke some for you in spirit, all right? Have a good weekend. God bless you all. All right, bye-bye.